So want to get more patients into your clinic? If so, that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So stick with me. Let's jump into this. Hey guys, what's going on? Yuri here, Yuriel Kim, founder of Healthpreneur, and we help health professionals fill and scale their practice. And I just had a little uh, technical glitch there trying to get this up on the screen, but we are good. I'm gonna show you how to get more patients into your clinic. So sit tight, maybe grab a pen and paper if you want, because I'm gonna walk you through these four squares, because in reality, there's only a few ways and many ways, to be honest, of getting patients. When we talk about getting patients, what we're really talking about is a marketing question, right? So marketing is everything that's going to get the patient in the door. Sales is everything that happens once the person's in the door. You're having a conversation with them about, are we going to work together, et cetera, okay? So marketing is extremely important. However, in my experience of having done this now for a very long time um, and helping thousands of practitioners, a lot of them don't proactively market because they've gotten their patients by word of mouth, right? And I'm going to talk about that right now because it's important to understand what you have in your arsenal. So um, a couple things here. If we look at this, we have paid, right? There's ways that we could pay for patients. And there are ways that we can get them for free. And there are ways that are fast. And there are other ways that are slow. Okay, so let's use those as our parameters and let's dive into this. So let's look at the fast and free way first and foremost. So the couple things here. What can we do that is fast, relatively fast, and is free or very close to being free? Number one, obviously, is going to be referrals. So if you have existing patients, you need to have a process in place to ask for referrals. I wanna be very clear with something. Referrals and word of mouth are not the same. Word of mouth is a very passive, maybe things are gonna happen, hope and pray type of approach. Referrals, well, at least the way I define them, is an, orchestra an orchestrated strategy of turning your patients or clients into partners with you who are going to bring other people like them into your practice. Very different. So you have to have a strategy for how to do this. The second thing you can do that's relatively fast and more or less free is going to be email. So if you have people on your email list, like patients, clients, prospects, uh, you should be emailing them frequently, right? Adding value, uh, <laughs> letting them know about what's going on, letting them know a little bit more about who you are and how you can serve them huge, hugely miss, um, just underutilized really in most businesses. So email, again, other than the service provider you're, you're paying for, you know, a couple bucks a month, it's pretty much free, which is also dangerous because we get lazy with it and don't do it properly, right? So that's the second way. Third way is text. Text is absolutely effective. I'll give you an example of this. So a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting at home minding my business when I get a text message from our vet. And the text message said something along the lines of like, hey, Layla, my dog, is due for her upcoming checkup or physical or whatever it was. And I'm thinking, I don't remember ever scheduling one, but sure, let's go with it. Took her into the vet. And a thousand dollars later, I came back home. And I was just really in awe of how that all happened from I never even considered going to the vet with my dog to doing so because of a text message I received from the vet while I was at the vet, understanding that for what my dog needed, this thing that I purchased for $1,000, this plan, whatever, was the best thing for her. And I just thought the whole thing was beautiful. That's the beauty of this, is that you can take someone from not even thinking about you to all of a sudden coming in and working with you, whether that's virtual or in person, and now it's like, boom, you've reactivated them as a paying patient. Incredible. Now, again, there are different services you can use for texting. I'm not talking about individually texting from your phone to every single one of your patients, but there are ways you can do this that'll take you seconds, literally seconds, and these are all things that we help our clients with. So those are like the fast and free ways, and here's the thing, is that in order for these to work, all of these 
rely on what we call BOF, which is bottom of funnel. I've talked about this before, is in any given marketing plan, you have top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel. These are your patients. These are people who know, like, and trust you and have done business with you already. Up here are people who are cold and they're unaware that you exist. And these are people that in the middle are aware of you but are not actively working with you. So in order for the free and fast stuff to work, you have to tap into your existing patient base. And if you don't have one, then that's, that's why we might move to the other side, which is the free and slow. Now, I'm going to just mention something here that this box that I'm about to share with you should be avoided like the plague. And the reason for that is a mindset more than anything. So if you own your own clinic, you have already paid for a lot of stuff, lease, equipment, staff, insurance, everything. And yet I have found in all my years of doing this that a lot of practitioners don't want to pay for marketing. And in fact, there was a study done with chiropractors in 2016 and I'll make sure that we post this on the screen so you can see this. And they were asked, in the next 12 months, which of the following are you most likely to purchase for your business? Guess what was at the top? Well, if you're seeing the screen, it was continuing education. It was like 88% of respondents, which is ridiculous. You're smart enough as it is. You don't need more degrees. At the very, very bottom of the list, marketing services. And I just found that shocking. But at the same time, a great representation of the reality of the health space. Um, Anyways, so when we look at slow and free, what are we talking about? I'm going to talk a couple, you know, mostly this is going to have to do with online, but let's just talk about a couple ways that I think are absolutely ridiculous. So let's talk about number one, flyers. Let's post some flyers at Starbucks and hopefully people will see them or let's staple them on lamppost on the sidewalks and maybe people will come into the clinic. If you're doing that, please stop, please. It is just... It's not good and it doesn't work. Number two, slow and free, like lunch and learns or talks. Listen, I love speaking on stage. I love doing talks, but listen, it's a waste of your time considering there are much better ways of getting in front of the exact people you want at the push of a button. So unless you enjoy driving all over the place and speaking for an hour at different companies and doing lunch and learns or whatever, Um, That's one thing. But if you want a much more effective way at getting in front of the exact people you want to serve at will 24-7, not just for one hour, there's better ways of doing things. What about online? Um, Let's talk about social media. So what I'm talking about here is I'm talking about posting, like, here's today's recipe on Facebook. Yay. But the problem is that no one sees it. 2% of your followers are going to see anything you post. And that's a stat that Facebook has made very public. What does that mean? That means don't waste your time posting stuff organically. No one's going to see it. What do I mean by organic? I mean free. If you think you're going to post stuff on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or Twitter and people are going to see it, probably not. Now, if you do have a more engaged audience on any of those platforms, then congratulations, amazing definitely use it, right? But still, there are better ways of doing things, okay? So social media is great, but the challenge is that it's a pay-to-play platform right now. It's pay-to-play. What about blogging? So let's say you've got a website for the clinic and you have a subsection called the blog. So you post some stuff up there and guess what? No one sees it, right? No one's coming to your website. You spend so much money creating a nice-looking website, which... I don't even know how it's even, I, I, it shocks me that there are companies out there that tell you that a nice looking website is going to make all the difference for your business when no one sees your website in the first place because they can't even find it on Google because you're competing against Dr. Oz, Healthline.com, WebMD.com, and every other clinic in your city. So yes, a good website helps, but it's not the most important thing. And especially if you're putting time and energy into building content to put on that website that no one's going to see, what's the point? I can speak from experience on this because my first business that I started in 2006 was largely built on blogging. We built our blog to 1.4 million unique visitors per month. So if you've got 1.4 million visitors per month, by all means, keep doing it. But it took us eight years to get there and about $35,000 a month in editorial team to make that happen. I don't think you need to do that. 
So the reality is that Google is a massively competitive place. There are trillions of pages of content. For yours to get found, unless you are Dr. Oz, is gonna be pretty slim to none. What about YouTube? If you're watching this on YouTube, hence the irony, right? So YouTube is amazing. I love YouTube. I think it's a great platform. But again, very much like blogging, if you create a video and no one sees it, well, that's the reality, right? So my uh, my health channel, which I've that was my first business. We helped you know, half a million customers. We built our blog to 1.4 million visitors per month. Our YouTube channel, I think now is 296,000 subscribers, even though I have not posted a video on that channel for two and a half years because I sold that company. So I haven't produced a new video on that channel for almost three years, and we added 150,000 subscribers during that time. What does that mean for someone who doesn't have a large channel? It means if you don't put a massive amount of energy and focus and money into doing it, you're probably not gonna get found. So these are some of the slow and free methods. And as you can tell, I don't think they're very smart, right? I think you're smarter than doing this stuff, okay? So what if, um, what about the paid and slow method? Well, I'm gonna put one of them in here uh, called direct mail. And I think direct mail is an amazing opportunity. I really, like, it's amazing. Who gets mail nowadays? No one. We like, we, we like run to the mailbox hoping for something from Amazon. Like it feels like Christmas when we order for something from Amazon. We're just like waiting by the door. Did it come yet? Did it come yet? No, no, no. Did it come? Oh my God. We get all nervous. So we like, it's crazy, right? Years ago, we didn't want to see anything in the inbox, in our mailbox. And then email came out. We're like, oh my God, did I get an email? Did I get an email? Did I get an email? And now it's like, oh my God, if I get another email, I'm going to throw my computer out the window. So the huge opportunity now is direct mail because no one's, there's no traffic. There's no, nothing. But direct mail needs to be done properly. It needs to have the right offer, the right messaging. It can take a little bit of time in terms of the creative, the fulfillment, the shipping, et cetera. So that's why I put that in there. But I do believe that this is a massive opportunity for sure. Now, another thing in here, I'm going to put in SEO because SEO is called search engine optimization. We talked a little bit about this down here with blogging and YouTube. So search engine optimization, I'm, I'm going to make a very clear distinction here. I'm not saying you should spend time blogging, but I do think there is value in having some SEO work done for your website so that when people type in chiropractor Toronto or uh, whatever, physical therapist Detroit, like wherever you are, that your website ranks higher in Google. That is a worthwhile investment of your time but and money, but it takes time for that ranking to occur, right? So I think these two are really important to consider, but I'll give you the holy grail of getting patience. And I'm gonna give this the big green because this is where the serious business owners play. Right, it's like going to the casino. I don't, I don't gamble, but I mean, if I were using this as an example, this is where the high rollers play. Now, you don't, you don't need to be a high roller. That's a great thing. You don't need to be driving up in a Rolls Royce with briefcases of cash to do what I'm about to suggest. This is available to everyone, especially if you use a process that we call patient financed acquisition. So here, number one is going to be Facebook ads. Facebook has three billion people. You don't need to serve three billion people. You don't even, you don't even need to serve a million people. You just need to serve a couple hundred, maybe a few thousand in your community and you've built the business of your dreams, okay? Facebook ads allow you at the push of a button to get your message in front of the exact people you wanna to speak to 24 seven at will. You can have nothing and then the next day you push publish on your Facebook ads and boom, within the space of hours or days, you have now put a message, an invitation for people to come into the clinic or whatever that looks like at the push of a button. These ads are like 24 seven digital salespeople that are working for you, right? And if they're done properly, then you'll see an amazing return. I'm not saying like give money to Facebook, I'm saying invest money in Facebook, invest in your business by leveraging Facebook really. And the beautiful thing is we call this patient finance acquisition because if it's done properly, you're running Facebook ads by using a credit card, right? You're not giving brief kisses of cash to a Facebook rep, right? So you put it on your credit card, and you run a campaign. During that campaign, people are gonna see your stuff, and some of those people are going to give you money, i.e. they come into your practice or work with you virtually, and now the fact that they've paid you reimburses you for the money you've given to Facebook, and you pay off your credit card, 
We call that patient finance acquisition. And most of our clients see about a two to 10X ROI within about 30 to 45 days of doing that. We have now been running ads in our business for the past four and a half years straight. We have not had a single week of negative ROI on our Facebook ads, right? And that's because we know what we're doing and we help our clients in the thousands do the same thing. So Facebook ads are a huge opportunity. Number two, we'll just call this Google PPC. So Google pay-per-click. So again, like with SEO, right? These tie kind of hand in hand together. Someone types in Toronto chiropractor, you can end up in the search or at the top three listings or on the right-hand search sometimes. Um, you'll see like a sponsored, right? P- sponsored post. That's the ad. So Google is PPC. Sorry, Google PPC is pay per click. Very, it's v- it's much more complicated than Facebook ads. I'll be honest with you. Google PPC is great, um, but it's complicated if you're going to do this yourself. And here's the thing: is I don't recommend you outsource this stuff to an agency. Please do not make that mistake. I get you're busy. I understand you want to spend more time with your patients. But listen, you have to take the reins of your marketing. Because if you give this stuff to someone else, they are simply going to oversee this as just another one of their things, right? An agency has dozens, maybe hundreds of clients. You're just one of them. And they don't care about your business as much as you do. They don't know your business. They don't know your market. They don't know your messaging. They don't know all that stuff that you know about your business. And that's why it's so critical to learn how to fish. I'm sure with your patients, you want to empower them to take control of their future, their health. It's the same thing with this. You need to take control of your business. You have to develop the business skills, the acumen that none of us were taught in school. And those that succeed in business are those that put on the business owner hat, not just the practitioner hat. But if you're okay just being the practitioner all the time, you will at best be self-employed. And if you're self-employed, you have no leverage. You trade time for dollars. And as soon as you don't, like you take a week off, no money comes in. And if no money comes in, you don't have a business. A business owner leverages systems. An investor leverages money. And what I'm suggesting to you is spend more time in here. Become the business owner if you're not already. Become the investor. Be willing to invest in your business to use leverage of your time and credit in the form of credit cards, which I'm not talking about getting into consumer debt. I'm talking about using credit cards in a very short amount of time in the form of advertising to attract patients coming into your practice who will pay off those credit cards before the billing cycle even finishes. This is how our clients who are doing five, six, even seven figures a month. Yeah, we've got clients that are doing $2 million a month right now in their health practices. This is what they're doing. And if you'd like our help to see what this can look like, here's what I'd suggest, is we have a great training called the Profitable Practice Method. There should be a link for it below this video. Go ahead and click that now, watch the training. I promise you it'll be a very, very good use of your time. And it's gonna open your eyes into showing you exactly how to do some of this stuff. And then if you'd like our help, you can certainly book a call near the end of the training. And we can take things to the next step if you'd like. But um, either way, I would suggest watch that training. It's very, very good. And I think it'll really, really give you some great insights about what not to do and what to do to move your practice forward. And obviously, how to get more patients because that's why you're here. So thanks so much for your time. I appreciate this. Hopefully you found this helpful. My name is Yuri. I'm signing off and I look forward to seeing you soon. 